So what are the skills that you need for medical school? In fact, what are the five skills that if you master them will just take you to another level? We're gonna talk about that in this video. Let's get to it. All right guys, welcome to the MD Journey. My name is Lux from Internal Medicine Resin, helping people just like you succeed on their medical journey with Lux. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, as well as that notification bell to be notified with our two weekly videos coming at you just like this one. So today I wanted to talk about a really important topic, which is what skills do you need to master in medical school and as a medical student to separate yourself from the pack from all of your other classmates to get away from that stereotypical stressed out, overwhelmed, and overworked med student. If you master these five skills, I promise you you're gonna enjoy med school, but you're also gonna be at the top of your class. Let's get into it. So the first skill that you really need to master is the ability to putting ideas together. Now here's what I mean. When you're in college or when you're first starting off med school, you're gonna to try to go through that memorization kind of approach when you're studying. But then you realize that when the test comes around or when you get to more important things like clinical rotations and actually taking care of patients, simply memorizing a fact for an ABC D exam doesn't correlate to becoming a good physician. Instead, you have to be able to take topics from a course you learned you know, a year ago to topics you just learned recently and being able to put them together to eventually take care of a patient. As a doctor right now, whenever I take care of patients, you know, I look at their labs and say, could it be their kidneys? And I think about all the different things that could be wrong there. Could it be their heart? Could it be, you know, their nervous system? And you put together all different concepts um, to help uh, and you put together different types of concepts to eventually help and take care of the patient as well as manage them. So you have to get better. So one of the most important skills in medical school is putting various ideas either within a specific class and obviously within many different organ systems and courses together. The second skill that we we're gonna talk about is you have to be a driven learner. Now medical school is sometimes anti-learning because you're forced to do so much as part of your classes and your exams. You know, it's not uncommon that there's some days we're gonna have to read 20, 30, 40, I think there's been days where I've had to read 60 pages for just one day's full of lectures. And that's a lot, you know, it's very easy not to be motivated and not want to do learning when you're not forced to. You know, if you have a weekend off, the last thing you want to do is to learn more information. But as you start getting into the clinical rotations, as you start becoming a physician, you realize that not all the information that you learned in medical school is able to fill in the gaps where you can take care of a patient. There are little things here and there that I still don't know, and so I have to look up. There are things that are always changing in medicine, you know, different forms of treatment, things that we wouldn't do back then that we're doing now, or things that we weren't doing that we realize this is complete BS and we should probably change our style of practice. And so to be able to grasp those concepts, you really have to be a continual driven learner. And I'll go ahead and link down a video below the different resources that I like to use to keep me up to date on things while also keeping learning medicine fun and entertaining. Now the third skill that's extremely extremely important to develop in medical school and as a medical student is you have to develop an intrinsic source of motivation. Now between intrinsic and extrinsic, extrinsics are things like people praising you, people you know respecting you, putting you on a high pedestal for the things that you've accomplished. Or it can be things like if you're working, then things like a monetary award or a medal if you're running a marathon. Those are examples of extrinsic motivators where things outside of your internal drive are causing you to continue to move on. But unfortunately, medical school doesn't have a lot of room for that. Um, you're gonna go from test to test without really anyone saying good job. If anything, people will know, you know you, you're stressed out in medical school, but that's pretty much all you get. You may get a pat on the back from working hard and eventually you will get a diploma when you graduate medical school but even that's not even the biggest source of motivation because there's still so much more left to do in your medical training. So you have to understand that to move along this journey and to be happy, to be driven, to kind of always want to move forward and progress, that source of motivation has to come from within. And a lot of med students don't learn this until much later on and they're burnt out. They don't feel like maybe this was the right decision. And unfortunately that happens to a lot of people. So as early as you can, find out what your intrinsic sources of motivation are. You know, some cliche things are things like find your why, uh, why are you doing this? And then other things that I love to talk about to build your intrinsic motivation are things like my golden nugget philosophy, which basically say, you know, what experiences have I had that have motivated me to this point? And where can I find more of those experiences? Where can I find more patient encounters, uh, more experiences and examples of me studying really hard and getting a great grade? Things that will can keep you going. I feel like this is one of the biggest things that kept me going through med school and still kind of have a smile on my face four years in. So if you want to be that kind of student, make sure you master your intrinsic source motivation. Now skill number four, and this is a big one because I feel like this is a pitfall if you don't do it, is you have to be prepared for failures. I think sometimes med students and students in general 
especially type A future doctors, don't like the word failure. But I've learned, if anything, that the quicker you fail, the quicker you learn and the better you're able to be in future challenges and opportunities. So if you're always worried about, oh man, I'm going to struggle on this exam, or I'm not sure if I should try this different study technique or try this different approach on my rotations because maybe it'll make me look bad and my grades will suffer. And then it's a whole circle of you just kind of getting in your head. But instead being okay with making little changes and just seeing how things work out. The sooner that you're able to understand that one, failure is inevitable in every phase of life that means not getting the test grades you want not getting the valuations you want or things just not going your way in general the easier it is for you to say okay what can i learn from this and how can i move forward to ideally avoid a similar situation so be prepared for failures it's going to happen to the lower extreme as well as some unfortunately sometimes on the higher side so being prepared for it and understanding how to look at it as a lesson is really one of the biggest skills you need in medical school as well as a medical student and getting into skill number five which is you need to develop this skills to remain steady and consistent. You know, I, I like to talk about this a lot of my philosophy for med school. I even made a video about it that you guys can check out. But what makes med school hard? And really, it's about being consistent four years in a row. That's, that's a lot to ask for for anybody. In addition to remaining consistent, which is so difficult, sometimes when we're in that middle zone, where we're in the second and third year of med school, we're kind of going through the flow. We know how to do things. But it doesn't seem like we're making any progress and it's easier to be burnt out during that time there's a concept known as Cantor's law which basically says that everything looks like a failure in the middle essentially you know you may have that nice up climb originally in the start of med school when you're learning a lot you're becoming more efficient in your second and third year you know you kind of are steady at that amount of output and amount of work you're putting in but during that middle it doesn't look like you're making any progress so it's very easy to be burnt out because you don't see yourself improving but instead take a step back and say how much have i grown how much have i improved also keep in mind what you're trying to accomplish these are all important concepts to become both steady and consistent in medical school because you may find these short spurts of videos that keep you motivated but then you know that motivation will eventually go away so one you gotta have that intrinsic source and two you just have to be going and working at it if you're getting the results you want, keep doing it. If you want better results, then make small changes, remain steady and consistent. That way the failures don't drag you down and the successes don't make you feel like you're on a pedestal. You kind of stay nice and even keel. Now I know I said five, but I want to give you one more skill that honestly is probably number one, but I just left it till the end of this video. And that is you have to, you focus on improving your people skills. Obviously, doctors interact with patients all day, but sometimes what I learned uh, from my medical school experience is that people don't work as much on their patient interaction as they do their medical knowledge. And unfortunately, we spend at least 50% of our time with patients and interacting with them. And it doesn't matter how amazing you are at your clinical acumen, if you can't convey to the patient that one, you understand what they're going to, and two, that you're able to kind of essentially dumb down all that medical knowledge into a piece of information that they can understand on what's going on, what you're doing for them, all your medical knowledge is kind of useless because a patient could just say, based off what you told me, I don't, I'm not interested in any of that. But it could simply have been a lack of communication, uh, an inability for you to connect and build rapport with that patient. I see that all the time. So make sure that you're working on your people skills. And essentially an easy trick that I would do is when I was interacting with patients, when I was on my clinical rotations, each day, each week, I would ask myself, how could I've had a better experience with that patient? It may have been a great experience. Still ask yourself, what ways could you have made it even better? You know, how could you have listened to them better? How could you have had some more directed questions? And how could you have made that patient feel like you were there to take care of them? Um, these are all kinds of things that I would do to make sure that my people skills were getting better, both my classmates as well as my patients. I feel at least through four years of medical school that I've definitely made huge strides through there. So I definitely recommend you guys try it out. Those guys are my five to six skills that I think you need to medical school to become a successful medical student. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you feel like I missed something or you wanna give your thoughts, then go ahead and drop them in the comment section. And before you leave, I wanna give you two places to go to ideally get more help and more kind of advice if you enjoyed a video like this. One, I'll link down a playlist that's all about um, how to succeed as a new med student because I'm presuming that you're just starting med school if you're watching this video. And two, if you guys are interested and you want like a step-by-step -step blueprint on different kind of parts of medical school, you can check out the courses that we have 
um, on the MD Journey website. So I will link that down below too. Before you click off this video, make sure, you know, if you enjoyed and got anything out of this video and you want to support the community, go ahead and at least hit that like button. Go ahead and consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get two videos thrown at you each week on Wednesdays and Sundays, just like this one. But thank you guys so much for joining me on my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.